Hey everyone, it is Josh here with HostGator. Today we are excited to show you how to build a new WordPress website from the ground up. In this series, we'll help you take your website from looking like this to looking like this in just a few easy steps. Today, we're going to be setting up WooCommerce, which is one of the largest e-commerce platforms on the internet. It's one of the best ways to get your WordPress store online. I'm really excited to show it to you today. If you need to get caught up, there's a link to the rest of the series in the description below. But if you're ready to go, let's get started. We'll kick things off today in our WordPress dashboard. If you remember our video on how to search for and install a new plugin, that's exactly the process that we're going to go through today. I'll put a link to the full video if you want to review down below, but let's go through that process now. We're going to start over here on the left hand corner and go to plugins and click add new. Now that we're on the plugins page, we'll go over here to the right hand corner, paste in WooCommerce and do a quick search. Now you'll see a lot of options for WooCommerce, but there's really only one that we need for right now. This is going to be the WooCommerce original plugin. Let's click install now. Once this is done being installed, we can go ahead and click activate, but let's talk about a few of the other plugins that we have here before we get started. Now, some of the additional plugins that we see here for WooCommerce are things like the Stripe Payment Gateway, WooCommerce PDF Invoices and Packing Slips, and WooCommerce for different markets or social media themes. If you have special requirements, WooCommerce probably has you covered, but today we're just going to start off with the original plugin. So we're going to go ahead and click Activate. After we click Activate, WooCommerce is going to actually walk you through the process of setting up your first store. First thing it's going to ask you is for your address. So I'm going to use HostGator's address here. After I get all that filled out, we're going to go ahead and click continue. Be sure to remember if you're setting up a store for a friend or a client, go ahead and click this box right now. Since I'm setting it up for myself, I'm going to go ahead and leave that unchecked. Next step, WooCommerce is going to ask you if you want to give feedback on non-sensitive data. Go ahead and click yes, count me in or no thanks, depending on your preferences. Now WooCommerce is going to ask us some information about our specific store. So it's going to ask us first, which industry do we operate in? For me, I'm going to be education and learning, but go ahead and pick the one that's most relevant to you and click continue. Next, we'll choose whether these are physical products or downloads that we're selling. You'll also see that you've got some subscriptions, memberships, booking, and bundles at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and click physical products and downloads and then click continue. Next up, WooCommerce is asking us a little bit about our plans for the store. First question is how many products do I want to display? I know I want to put at least 50 videos on this store. So I'm going to choose 11 through 100. It's also going to ask if I'm currently selling anywhere else. I'm going to go ahead and choose no. So since I'm not planning on selling anywhere else, you can see that WooCommerce is recommending Facebook, MailChimp, and a few other options. This is going to help market your site outside of your store. If you choose these options, WooCommerce is actually going to download some of these plugins on your behalf. So I'll leave those on. We'll go ahead and click continue. As you can see down here, the plugins were successfully activated. Next, WooCommerce is asking us if we'd like to choose a new theme or stick with the one that we originally used. Since I've built up a lot of content on 2020, I'm going to go ahead and continue with my active theme. So I'll click here. One of the great things about WooCommerce is that it's going to try and anticipate your needs when it comes to your store. Right here, it's actually offering to automatically calculate your sales tax and print your shipping labels at home. This sounds like an option I could use, so I'm going to go ahead and click yes, please. Now that we've gone through the setup wizard, you can see that we're actually in the WooCommerce plugin now. It's going to have some welcome screens here, so I'm going to go ahead and click next. And now we're actually in the back end of my WooCommerce store. As you can see, we've got some options here to add products, set up payments, set up tax, shipping, and personalize my store. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and start to add products. Now, before we get started adding products, this is a good call out. If this is the first time you're using WooCommerce, it may ask you to set up an initial profile. So ask you for an email, a password, and payment information. Since I've already got mine set up, it's not actually going to ask me for that today, but I just wanted to call that out. This is likely the place where you'll have to create your own account. So to kick things off, let's click add my products. And as you can see, it's only going to take a few minutes per product. So we'll click here. Now it's important to note that if you're migrating from another store, you can choose the options to import or migrate that information over. Since I don't have an existing store, I'm going to go ahead and click add manually. So here's where we can add a new product to the store that we're actually building. Since my videos are always going to be free on YouTube, I'm going to create a fake product just to show you how this process works. For this example, I'm going to use a snappy plush, and the first thing we're going to give it is a product name. As usual, WooCommerce is trying to help us out by telling us exactly what we need to do. I'm going to go ahead and dismiss these for now, but you can keep them up if they're helpful. The first thing I'm going to do is set my product name as snappy plush. 
Now, if this page looks a little bit familiar, you're absolutely right. This really resembles the add new blog post or add new page for our WordPress buildup. Now we have a few extra features here, so I'm gonna scroll down and show you a little bit about them. Right underneath our product title, we have the option to add media. So I'm gonna add a picture of this. I've already got a photo of the Snappy Plush uploaded in my media library. If you need to upload new stuff, you can click upload files here. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert that into product. Now you can see the photo of Snappy appears right here. If you wanna add a contact form or a regular form, you can do that here as well. And of course, if you wanna do a description or some information about the product, you can do that inside this as well. So now we can scroll down just a little bit to fill out some of the product data. As you can see, the first thing it's gonna ask is what type of product it is. For me, this is just a simple product, but you also have the option for grouped, external affiliates, or variables. I'll also give you the option to check if it's a virtual or downloadable product. Since Snappy's a real thing, I can actually leave those unchecked. Down here in the general section, the first thing it's gonna ask us is for the regular and the sale price. Now it's good to set a regular price and sometimes you can put things on sale. For the regular price here, I'm gonna put $10 and I'll leave the sale price blank. I can put a sale on later if I want to. The next option that we have here is inventory. We'll click there. Now, if you want to manage through SKU, you can do that here. Now, if you want to manage the stock at a product level, you can check this and it'll actually give you the option to select the stock quantity that you have, allow back orders, and if there's a low stock threshold, you can actually show that on the product itself. I'm gonna leave my stock quantity at 10. The next option it's gonna show you is for shipping. Click here, you can actually fill out the weight, length, width, and height, and the shipping class if you want to. There's more options down here for linked products, attributes, advanced options, so we'll leave those unchecked for now. Since we've got the general information for the sale price, the inventory, I think we're good to go. If we scroll down just a little bit further, now we have an option to add some short descriptions. I'm gonna put some information about the plush itself here. Again, you have an option to add medias, forms, or contact forms. We'll leave this as it is for now, and we'll scroll up to see some of the options on the right-hand side. As you can see over here, this is a very similar method to our publishing of a blog post or a page. We have the option to save this draft, preview it, we can actually check the status of the draft, we can edit the visibility, so public, password protected, or private. We can also choose the options to publish this immediately or set it to publish on a specific date. We also have some options for catalog visibility, or we can publish immediately. Scrolling down just a little bit further, we'll talk about product categories. Now, these are essentially what allow you to organize your store. So we're going to keep it really simple here, but say you have a clothing company and you want to sell a tank top, you would put that under the category for t-shirts. So you have the option to add new categories here and fit them underneath parent categories if you want to. So a lot of good options here if you want to really organize your store for a lot of different content. Now, the next option that we have here are product tags. So these are essentially the way items will get tagged inside of your store. So keywords are really essential here. I'm gonna add a few here for my product. First thing we're gonna do is add alligator. We've got a few others, we'll add plushy. We'll do stuffed animal. We'll do cute, snappy is pretty cute. And we'll add blue. Scrolling down just a little bit further, we can set the product image. This is actually what's going to appear in our store, so I'm going to set it as the same one that I put in our description. Click set product image, click the one for snappy, click set product image and we're good to go. Now that we've got this information filled out, I'm going to scroll up and over here on the right hand side, I'm going to click publish. Awesome, so that's officially published. You can see on the bottom WooCommerce is congratulating us for that. Now that we have our first product in the store, all we need to do is figure out exactly where that product is going to. So we're going to head over to the pages section. If we scroll down just a little bit, we can see that we have a shop page. So I'm going to go ahead and click view. And there it is. My first product is officially in my store. It looks pretty cool. Now that our first product is in the store, let's go ahead and click on WooCommerce and set up our payment information. And as you can see, the next setup option we have here is setting up payments. So let's click that. Now we've got some options here based on the information we gave it in our initial setup wizard. So we can choose to set up Stripe or PayPal. I'm gonna go ahead and use PayPal today. So I'll click set up. As you can see, WooCommerce is already installing the WooCommerce PayPal option. It's gonna give the option to connect to your PayPal account or create a brand new one. I'm gonna go ahead and connect to it. So I'll uncheck this and I'll click connect. Now WooCommerce is gonna ask me to start logging in with my PayPal information. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this out and I'll be right back. After inputting my email address, it's gonna ask me to log in for PayPal. So I filled out my email address and password. I'm gonna go ahead and click login. At this point, PayPal is gonna ask me to create a business account. It's totally free. And if you don't have one already, you can go ahead and click create new account. And here you can see I've entered all my information for my PayPal business account. I'm gonna go ahead and click agree and continue. Now that I've gone through the process of adding all my information for PayPal, signing up for a business account, logging in, as you can see here, I'm finished with a setup for setting up payments. Next option we'll go through is set up tax. I'll click here. 
you can see, Jetpack and WooCommerce are automatically going to calculate those sales tax for me. So I'll click yes, please. And as you can see, setup tax is now done. As you can see here, we're getting really close to the finish of this setup. The only other things we need to worry about are setting up shipping and personalizing the store. And we can do those later, but the first thing I want to show you is actually where the products are going to populate and how you can set up your store page. So over here on the left hand side, I'm going to click on pages and click all pages. So if you remember back to some of our earlier videos, we've got a lot of pages already set up. The cool thing about WooCommerce is as soon as you install the plugin and get things set up, it actually starts to put pages together for you. We have a cart page, a checkout page. If we scroll down just a little bit further, I actually have a shop page down here already ready to go. Now let's take a look at the shop page. I'm going to go ahead and click view. And check it out. My snappy plush is already there. I've got the option to add it to the cart already. I think this looks pretty cool so far. There's only one thing we need to worry about, and that's adding the shop page to the top of my menu. If you remember back from our last video, we already went through this with our about, our blog, and our contact page. So let's go through this process again and add our store to the main level menu. So let's start the process of adding it to my main menu. I'm going to hover over Josh Makes Tutorials, click on Menus. As we can see over here, my menu structure is already created. So I've got my home, about, blog, and contact. I've got a few other pages over here now that I want to add to the same menu. First thing I'm going to do is click my shop, click add to menu. Now I can see my shop pages here. I also want to make sure that I put the checkout page on there or the cart page. I like the cart option, so I'm going to click cart and checkout too. Click add to menu. Now I've got all these listed. I'm going to save my menu. Now that that's saved, I'm going to go check out the home page and see what it looks like. Awesome, here's my home page. I've got my home, about, blog, contact. Now I've got my shop, checkout, and cart pages. Let's click shop and see what it looks like. This is pretty cool. I got my snappy plushie right here. I can click add to cart. Now I can view my cart. I've got the option to check out here. If I want to add coupons later, I can definitely do that inside of WooCommerce too. If I scroll down just a little bit, I can go ahead and proceed to checkout. And this is great. My customers now have the option to purchase Snappy Plushes directly on my website. I think it's pretty cool. I always recommend going through the checkout process at least once to make sure you can see what your customers are going to see when they make an order on your website. It's always a good idea to keep the customer experience in mind. So if it's easy for you to go through that process, it should be pretty easy for them to do it too. Now that we've gone through this process, let's head back to our WooCommerce plugin to make sure we're not forgetting anything. So I'll hover over here and go back to my dashboard. From here, I'll click on WooCommerce and click on Home. As you can see, we've only got a few things left here, setting up shipping and then personalizing the store. Those are things you can definitely go through on your own and they're pretty easy. If you want to start adding more products to your store, all you have to do is go down here and click Products. You can see all the products that you have and start to add new ones down here in this menu below too. As you can see, this looks very similar to our published pages. I can see I've got a published product here. I can do an edit, quick edit, delete it if I want to. I can see how many I have in stock, what my price is, categories, tags, and the date that it was published. If you want to add a new one, just click add new and you'll go through the exact same process that we did before. And that pretty much wraps it up for our WooCommerce setup. Congratulations on setting up your first store and I hope you have lots of success. As always, if you like the content that we're making, please feel free to give it a like, let us know in the comments below what you think, and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks y'all. Thank you.